Welcome back. Well, I'm filming this video rather late in the day um, because it's been warm and also, as you know, my street for a quiet country road is very, very noisy. So I'm trying to see if I can find a time that might be a little cooler, um, keep the windows open, not give you too much in the way of street noises. We'll see how well we make out on this. Okay, today I want to show you some more stuff from Lutz Antiques. And if you'll recall, last time we did uh, china cabinets and display cabinets. And uh, I've been gathering, this is film gathered on about three trips, I think, to show you some bookcases. Because one of the things Lutz has is fantastic bookcases. And uh, this is interesting because, first of all, it'll show you what a nice antique bookcase looks like, how much it costs, and if a bookcase is something you see in your purchasing future, it can give you some ideas and some directions. Now, I have a lot of bookcases to show you. So, in this video, we are mostly going to rely on the information I give you while I'm filming in the store. Otherwise, we'll be here for two hours. Okay, we'll get started when we come back. When I went through my stock of bookcase footage from Let's Antiques, I came across, I think, four separate filmings of this one particular bookcase. Part of that is where it's located, just as you go up the half flight of stairs into their main showroom. But I think most of it is, I just love it. So, let's take a look. Okay. Let's take a look at bookcases today. I've shown you this piece before because it's gorgeous. But since we're going to take a look at bookcases, we're going to take a second look at this. Or maybe a third. I don't know how many times I've shown you this one. I love the beautiful inset filigree panels there. It's just gorgeous. The lines of this bookcase are great and the little paw feet are fantastic too. Here, let's take a peek at our price, $635. Oh, worth every penny. I think it's a great book. I really do. Um, it's, it's nice. This is not the bookcase I would choose to take home with me, mostly because it's a little, just a little mm, two steps off my style. But golly, do I love it. Um, and it does everything a bookcase needs to do, in my opinion. I like glass doors on bookcases. I mean, you can, where are we? Here. You can see that. Uh, glass doors on a bookcase means I don't need to dust books. And I can be very, very lazy about dusting books. So, yeah, I like it. Also, it means Audie, who, by the way, is sitting right next to me. Um, it means Audie won't get in, get in behind the books, and then kick the books out of his way when he feels like stretching out. And believe me, when these bookcase doors are open, 
That is exactly what he does. He crawls in, makes a little nest for himself, and then when he feels he doesn't have enough room, bang, my books are on the floor. So, I like glass doors. Anybody, you know, with kids with pets, a ah, lifesaver. So, that's one of the reasons this is a favorite of mine. I found another not bookcase, something else, but it occurred to me that in the right setting, especially in an industrial loft setting, or maybe a home with a lot of primitives, this would work as a bookcase. Let's take a look. This piece is $190, and it's a shoe rack. Now, it's not exactly a bookcase, but if you look at the shelves, you can see it could obviously become a bookcase. And that would be especially appropriate for a rustic interior, um, a, a loft industrial sort of interior. That is an unofficial bookcase, let's call it. Yeah, so that's a shoe rack. But given some of the bizarre things I've used for bookcases over the years, and yes, when I was in my 20s, I did indeed have shelving board on concrete blocks. It was the 60s. We all did. So, yeah, I've used crazy things for bookcases. But that, my goodness, yes, that's what I would do with it. I would stuff it full of books. Um, from here, we go over to a really interesting Victorian secretary. And I think I might have shown you this piece before. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, it's a nice, nice piece. And, well, take a look. Now, this piece is a secretary bookcase. Back in the days when books were expensive and more of a rarity, a small bookcase like this was probably about all the average middle-class family could stuff with books. Not the expense of the piece of furniture, mind you, but the expense and the rarity of books, especially if you were out in the Midwest. Ooh, 475. Nice. All right, 475 is a fantastic price. Delightful. Now, if you were out in the Midwest, off the beaten path, so to speak, not Chicago. Books were something that sort of fell into your life on very rare occasions. So as you can see, given the rarity of books, it would have been more than adequate to store the library of the average family. Beautiful piece. And of course, let's see if we can get this open. There we go. wonderful piece. Ink spill. And of course that ink spill dates to the old days when pens did not come equipped with their own built-in ink supplies. Pieces like that would have formed uh, a, like a library in a home. Uh, Books were scarce. They were hard to come by. They were expensive. If you lived in a city, you could get books. You could even find a bookstore. It's hard for us to understand what it was like um, in the 19th century when books were really expensive and, and hard to come by. It wasn't just, oh, well, if I have, you know, 
enough money to feed a family for three weeks. I can just go buy a book. No, it was even a question of getting your hands on the book in the first place. And this is something we see in Jane Austen's novels when she speaks about, you know, people joining a circulating library. Even people in the wealthier classes would get their books from circulating libraries because having your own library was an incredible luxury. So remember that the next time you see, you know, a $2 remnant book somewhere. In times past, the ease with which we can get books today would have been unthinkable to them. So yeah, two or three little shelves might have been the extent of the home library. Uh, I found another secretary bookcase, a uh, different style, and uh, it's marked 1880s. The truth is I would have guessed that as a little later. I, I really would have. So I don't know if they're right or I'm right. I'm right about the East Lake. I'll tell you that. When I go in there and I say, no, that's not Victorian, that's East Lake. I'm right about that. But this piece, I don't know, because they really are very, very knowledgeable about their, their stuff. They know, oh, they know the backstory pretty well. But nice piece. Take a look and please Note the beautiful veneers, the graining on that pull-out sort of roll-top desktop. Well, here is another combination secretary bookcase. This one is newer than the last one we saw very interesting. We've got a roll-top desk here. Beautiful wood veneers. Let's see, 1395 Walnut Cylinder Desk 1880s. Well, 1880s. I would have guessed this as newer than that. Lovely, lovely piece. And again, here's our book storage. Yeah, easy to see why. $13.95, sure. Um, piece like that, the, the condition's beautiful. It's like new. Um, a wonderful piece. Somebody took very good care of it. I like the fact that it's a style that can blend in with almost anything. So absolutely, whatever your decorating style is, you can fit that piece in somewhere. Uh, next up, uh, what in my notes, I've described it as the mega secretary. So take a look. This is also a piece I know I've filmed for you before. A massive desk with uh, cabinets on either side. Now, these could be bookcases. They could be display cabinets. Let me quickly take a look at the price here. Um, $39.50. Beautiful interior. This is just, this is Eastlake Wonderland. We've got everything we look for in Eastlake. We have the incised designs. We have the Gothic ornamentation. We have the turned spindles. Um, I'm looking for the applied decoration, and that I am not seeing. But still... Gorgeous East Lake piece. Let's see what they say. They're usually very good about this here. Um, all right, rare Victorian. Mm, no, we're not Victorian. We are East Lake. 
And my best guess on this is mid-1890s. So I guess by default I would say 1895. And this was not something you would find in your average middle-class household, not by a long shot. So this is where Lutz and I disagree. That's Eastlake. But you know that because you know what to look for in Eastlake. The only thing missing is the applied decoration. Other than that, it has every characteristic of Eastlake. Um, so I would look at something like that. I would throw a date of, you know, very late 1800s, 1895, give or take. Beautiful piece. This did not come from the average middle class household. This, this belonged to somebody with a fat bank account, frankly. This came from a large home. It was probably a piece in a home library. And if we're looking at 1890s, we're still in that period when books were scarce and expensive. Now, they were becoming more affordable at this point, but still, no, anybody who could have stuffed that with books was certainly well healed. Lovely piece. Not for everyone. It's almost $4,000. And you can see why. It's just, it's a massive piece. That's the kind of piece you decorate a room around. I love it. It's beautiful. I do not have space for anything like that. I very much doubt I ever will. Because, boy, talk about the dusting involved in keeping up with a house that big. But I love the piece, love to see it. Whenever I go in there, I do look for it. Next up, this is, a, we are going from the mega case to a very small, unpretending, simple oak bookcase. Take a look. And here is an oak bookcase. 395. It's relatively small. It looks like it's about four feet across and mm, perhaps not five feet high. Really nice oak graining. Looks to be the original finish. Beautiful, beautiful piece. Can you see the similarities between that bookcase and the one behind me? Because I can. Um, mine is, is larger, a little more elaborate, but gee, that is a beautiful little workhorse piece. That gets the job done with no pretensions. I think that's terrific. Three ninety five, mm, lovely, lovely. Um, my very favorite bookcase, and one that you have no idea how tempted I was. If I had the room, I would buy it. Uh, and it's been sold, so the temptation is out of my path. But I would go in, I would look at this piece and think, well, I'll make the room for it. Take a look. Beautiful little bookcase. And I say little because we're looking at about five feet tall, right across here. Now I'm filming this at my eye level, so about five feet tall, 395, sliding glass doors, solid oak. I love this work, I really do. Um, and I'm going to estimate that it's approximately four feet across, five feet, and then what? I would say 14, 12 to 14 inches um, deep. Really pretty piece. The kind of piece that could fit into any home. Um, mm, 495, mm, tempting. 
I love that piece. It's small. It's from the same period as this bookcase. Um, and it's got some other similarities. This bookcase was not a, like a grand, elegant piece from a fine, elegant home. This was a bookcase from a, a middle class, upper middle class, maybe, home. Um, well, I guess it would have to be sort of on the upper middle class side, because at that time, a bookcase was a luxury that a middle class family might not be able to indulge in. That little bookcase, oh, I love the daylights out of it. I'm so glad it found a home, because it's just terrific. And I'm sure the new owners are delighted. Um... Next up, store shelves. The, this is not for sale. This is just what they are putting their stuff in. But I thought you might like to take a look at it. Well, here we have a very interesting little bookcase. We have cubbies on the side. And we have shelves in the middle. Oak. Judging by the finish, I'm going to guess 1900 to 1910. No price, I'm assuming. Once again, this is the store's furnishings. I will, however, ask because this is a really nice piece. Now, a piece like that is really interesting and different. When I see something like that, I think my first thought is usually gee, did somebody sort of custom fabricate this? You know, was Grandpa good with a saw and a hammer? Because it's unusual and different. My best guess in terms of the age is around 1910. And you did see pieces like this, especially as we're getting into the arts and crafts movement, because um, handcrafted pieces were becoming very popular and, and accepted. Um, prior to the arts and crafts period, handcrafted furniture was sort of the mark of someone who couldn't afford store-bought. I know, we have exactly the opposite attitude today, but it, people sort of looked down on that a little. In the arts and crafts period, when they were valuing handcrafted items, suddenly the virtues of the handmade piece and grandpa just put that out of his workshop and suddenly that became the rage. So I think that's a really nice, nice piece. And while we are on arts and crafts, um, this is a little piece that I haven't seen at Lutz the last two times I was there, leading me to believe it was sold. And this is, um, in the filming, I described it as Art Nouveau tending to arts and crafts. I've had a chance to think about it, and I'm going to call it arts and crafts instead. It's a desk with a little bookshelf on the bottom, so I decided to throw it in. All right. Start with 295. And this is described as an ornate slant front desk which it certainly is. Um, this is, I'm going to say it's an Art Nouveau style. Um, it's more of a simplified Art Nouveau. I think we're seeing Art Nouveau to Arts and Crafts transitional here. Highly decorative, beautiful piece, very dependent on the different colors and contrasting graining of the woods for its appeal. Small piece, petite. Uh, we're probably looking at about three feet by four feet tall and at the widest point, um, 12, 14 inches. Perfect for a tiny home, an apartment, uh, for sticking a desk in some unusual place where you just might want a desk. Mm, probably make a great laptop center. 
I really love this piece. Two ninety five. dollars What a great price for a piece like that. Um, I mean, can you see that in a kid's room? I really can. I think that is something that, my goodness, it could probably get them all the way through high school. Nice little piece. Also, that would be a great haul piece. Um, again, glad it found a good home because it's a sweet piece, so it delights me. Um, we have another desk bookcase combination, and this is very different. This was most likely a piece that came out of an office setting. Well, here we have a desk bookcase combination. And these are barrister bookcases. We've talked about those before. This top lifts up and then slides back so that you can get at the books. And here's our desk. Beautiful piece. Leaded glass here. Ah, this will lift. So that also is a barrister as well. $8.95. Nice, nice piece. Um, I'm going to guess this is from the 30s or 40s. It looks about that style. Really interesting piece. Now, once again, this is a piece I have not seen the last couple of times that I was at Lutz. So I'm assuming it has been sold. Really nice. Barrister bookcases are so popular. They are just insanely collectible now because they are mix and match pieces. Barrister bookcases are designed um, to be taken apart, put together, reconfigured. Great. Just really appeals to the modern sensibility. But that was an especially nice, nice piece. So let's take a look at our final piece, which is a teeny tiny little piece. Again, another one that I have not seen the last couple of times I was there. Beautiful piece. Um, $195, so inexpensive, but it's a bookcase. Take a look. Well, this is a sweet little piece. $195. We have the open top with the little gallery rail. Here we go. Little glass doored cabinets, two shelves. And then down here, we have two more shelves. Very interesting legs. Um, nice piece. Probably first half of the 20th century. I don't think it's much older than that. This is the sort of piece that's very useful for smaller, modern spaces. Some of the pieces we look at are just huge. This one is a more manageable scale. I love that piece. That is a bookcase that you could use as an end table, that you could tuck into a corner, perfectly sized for modern, smaller spaces. All right, so that is the Lutz bookcase tour. As you can see, they just run the gamut from you know, beyond elegant, right down to, gee, this is something I could see myself buying for the kids. Um, if you like this sort of thing, let me know, because we can take a look at whatever furniture categories you would like to look at. Uh, dressers, wardrobes and chiff robes, kitchen pieces, uh, it, they're all out there. It's just a question of gathering the footage and putting it together for you which I'm happy to do. All right, have a terrific day, everyone. I will see you tomorrow. We have a really unusual project for tomorrow. All right, I'm gonna show a little slideshow on the way out. 
Uh, let's do Brown Haven. One of uh, one of Liz's. Maybe her birds or her flowers or something. I'll find something nice. All right. See you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.